And the last thing that I want to ask you to think about with uh, Gilly Hopkins is visualization. Uh, because we're uh, thinking about this as a, a book that's being made into a film, uh, and we're still in the arrangements to get that uh, film viewing going, uh, I'll keep you uh, posted on that. Uh, is that uh, visualization, what kind of movie are we making in our head? And it, it's uh, something that I'm hearing from people is that this is not an all or nothing proposition, that some of what we imagine really gets strong and powerful visuals, not just visuals, uh, we're talking about other sensations as well, visuals, sounds, uh, sound effects, uh, textures, smells, sense of touch, and memories uh, that you bring back from your own uh, personal life to kind of go along with the book. Uh, we want to talk a lot ab about what this book does to evoke this kind of uh, participation for you. And this helps us to demonstrate that comprehension is an active process. It's not us receiving the book, it's us actually constructing a version of this story in our mind's eye and in our body's, uh, our, our body's eye, if you can use that that sort of metaphor. All right, uh, I think that's all I'm going to say for this week. The next thing uh, in Gilly Hopkins is that uh, the 70s uh, were a great time for the tough girl character. Uh, I'll be showing you some clips in class of Jodie Foster from the film Candle Shoe from 1977. Uh, but this really rough around the edges, uh, swearing, stealing, almost criminal uh, girl character uh, was a really important shift in characters in the mid-1970s, so we'll talk about that in class as well. Uh, another thing uh, about reading novels for uh, young kids is that around third grade, uh, we have to actually teach kids to keep track of things in novels. So uh, knowing the characters, the settings, and the events, and being able to timeline those is something that we're going to do physically in class because when kids have a difficult time internalizing something or doing something mentally, uh, when we do it physically and socially, it creates capacity for them and actually creates uh, the ability for them to m remember how to do those things internally instead of uh, needing those uh, scaffolds or crutches uh, that are physical after a while. So we'll do a lot of that in class. Okay, we're going to talk about Gilly Hopkins here a little bit. Uh, Gilly Hopkins is uh, not chosen because it's uh, my favorite book of all time. It's because there's a lot of interesting stuff to discuss in it. And uh, also because we may not all like it, uh, it'll be a lot more interesting discussion for us because there's uh, a lot of controversial stuff going on in this book. Um, uh, first thing with reading a novel, uh, and this is no exception, is that the first chapter, first couple of chapters are the hardest for us to get into. Uh, and so I hope that that's the uh, sense that you'll give us, that you'll just buckle down in the interest of having the discussions with us and getting moving forward. And let's also just talk about what makes those uh, first one to two chapters, the first 10, 20 pages of a novel, the hardest to get past. Uh, the next thing with this novel is that the main character is just totally unlikable, and Katherine Patterson writes her that way on purpose. So why do authors do that, uh, and what does it take to be able to follow an unlikable character through a novel, and do you like that? Uh, and you might like it for other novels, but not this one, so that's going to be part of our discussion. Uh, ultimately, this novel is about character development. Uh, what changes and how does it 